Good afternoon and welcome back to our MERSC monthly update. This is our last one for 2021. We will share our latest news and talk about the trends and challenges facing our industry with a particular focus on Asia Pacific. Our aim here is to help you make better informed decisions on your supply chain management and to show how the full range of MERSC supply chain solutions can help moving your business when faced with challenges and unexpected disruptions. My name is Cindy Ran. I'm from MERS Asia Pacific Regional Ocean Management Team, and I'm heading Asia to Africa market and sport and digital team. I'm joining you from Shanghai today. I'm very pleased to be joined by my colleague, Justin Barrow. Hi, I'm Justin Barrow, head of uh, Greater China Air Freight and TS. Today, we will share the latest updates on Ocean. Have a look at what air freight services will look like in 2022. Then we will share some news on our efforts in the digitalization of the Ocean Transport and MERS contracts. We will end with an update on our efforts regarding sustainability and our ambition to provide a carbon neutral supply chain by 2050. If at any time you have any questions or feedback, please type them in the chat box on the right of your screen. We will try to answer questions as we broadcast or we will get back to you and follow up after. We also issue a monthly update by email. If you want to receive these updates too, we have just posted the link for you to register in the comment section you can also scan the QR code on the screen now to watch our previous broadcast from November. So let's jump right in and see what's happening on Ocean. Looking forward to 2022, we expect the strong market to continue at least in quarter one. It is supported by strong demand around China's New Year. Next year, it falls on February the 1st. However, we expect to see issues still with capacity due to vessel delays and poor congestions. Around 12 to 15% of global container ship capacity was effectively taken out of the market. We expect space to remain tight in the run up to the Chinese New Year. On equipment supply, while we continue to inflate containers and are getting more empty equipment back to Asia, we still see shortages in some locations in the lead up to Chinese New Year. But overall, the situation has improved since our last update, and we expect the situation to continue to improve after the New Year. When we look at North America, however, ports are becoming more congested, and this is throwing up challenges for many shippers. We will continue to see a loss of capacity from missed sailings as long as port congestion continues. To mitigate any impact on your supply chain, we have already dropped Seattle from our TP9 service and now run a separate Seattle shuttle service, TP7. This action will help secure network capacity and improve schedule reliability. Now, for some important news regarding barge services into South China in the build-up to Chinese New Year. COVID-19 new wave has resulted in a shortage of port crew, and this will cause problems over the upcoming holiday season. We received official notice from Hong Kong barge service providers that there will be no barge coverage into South China barge ports from December the 25th until February the 10th. Therefore, please expect longer layovers or delays for both exports and imports from barge ports by Hong Kong. You should also note that the acceptance of special cargo imports will also be suspended into these locations. As your integrated logistic partner, we work hard to minimize any impact to a business and so during this period, we will provide alternative transshipment services by Shiwan, Shikou, or Nansha. 
these transshipments are still available for dry and refund cargo. We continue to monitor the situation very closely. We are looking at both inland and other ocean solutions to try to alleviate the disruption caused by these port suspensions. As soon as we have any further updates, we will notify you accordingly. So that's the situation on ocean. Now let me invite Justin to share more interesting insights on air freight. Justin, over to you. Thank you, Cindy. Today I'd like to quickly share with you what we think 2022 air freight market will look like and why. Then I'll share a few suggestions on how to use air freight more effectively to mitigate potential risks in your supply chain. Peak season in 2021 was, in my opinion, a perfect storm, where a combination of unexpected events disrupted capacity, challenged service levels, and sent market rates to record all-time highs. Capacity was particularly hard, hard hit by a number of factors. The impact of COVID on international travel reduced belly capacity. Overall capacity worldwide was down by as much as 12% compared to 2019. Asia to EU belly capacity in October 2021 versus 2019 same period was down by 28%. For Asia to the US, while capacity increased recently, demand has also surged, outpacing additional space that was added. And in China, COVID flare-ups around Pudong Airport in Shanghai in August resulted in major disruptions to air freight operations. Disruptions caused by airlines shifting capacity to other airports have also caused service levels to decline and air freights to climb to new historic highs. While capacity has started to improve, particularly in the EU and the US, the new wave of COVID-related lockdowns in the EU means we can expect further disruptions. So what does 2022 hold for us? The way I see it, three factors will be key in influencing air freight services. First, the recovery of international travel. Second, a change in consumer behavior. And third, disruptions to the supply chain. First, for international travel, we all know there's a lot of pin-up demand for travel when restrictions are eased. International passenger travel and belly capacity will return. However, predicting when this will happen will is very difficult, even more so for China. Second, consumer behavior. COVID lockdown restrictions and stimulus payments have all caused a boom in consumer spending, particularly in categories such as high-tech and home-use items, where before it was all PPE, now it's all about home test kits, electronics, and consumer goods. With the impact of COVID lessons and countries start to open up for long term, we expect some of this demand will lessen and will increase in other areas such as fashion and apparel industry. And third, supply chain disruption. This year we've seen numerous black swan events, including the Suez Canal crisis, the COVID flare up at Shanghai's Pudong Airport, congestion of ports and airports, as well as ongoing lack of warehouse labor and drivers. The surge in ocean volumes coupled with the shortage of landside resources to handle these volumes will continue to accentuate the impact on the supply chain of these black swan events. There are also some not so obvious trends we may see emerge in 2022. International travel will not return how it was before COVID. Many of the higher capacity master aircraft, the Boeing 747, for example, may not return to the skies as airlines opt for, to renew their fleets and buy newer, more efficient, but smaller aircraft for international passenger transport. Belly capacity will therefore be less than before COVID. Air freight market fragmentation. The market for air freight has become more fragmented with forwarders and shippers shifting towards procuring dedicated capacity on their own controlled charter flights. This has helped to improve reliability, but the market as a result has been more fragmented with each provider having their fixed own capacity instead of using flexible shared capacity with commercial airlines. The question you're probably asking yourself now is, so how do I mitigate the impact to my supply chain? The answer to that is, it starts with having a flexible air freight strategy ready and working now. Don't wait until it's too late. It's better to have a realistic approach of how air freight fits into your overall shipping plans than to wait for unexpected disruptions to force your hand. Too many times shippers do not have a strategy on how to minimize risk by using air freight in a consistent and planned way. Instead, they end up forced by frequent and unexpected accidents to fall back on large unplanned shipments by air. 
As no one can predict where or when the next disruption may occur, it's best to work with providers now to develop alternative routing and capacity plans that allow you to shift volumes away from impacted airports and areas quickly and with the least impact. Custom clearance also tends to be an overlooked area that can limit options and prices, and so it is recommended for, you, for this to include in your planning instead of having to deal with it in the middle of a crisis. Have an open and ongoing communication with your providers and understanding their operations will help you better understand how to work together to develop fast and effective response to crisis. And so my piece of advice is to start working together with your air freight provider now to develop strategies that are flexible and can be changed to adapt to, to changing conditions. If you'd like to discuss our extensive range of air freight services and solutions, leave a note in the message box or get in touch with your primary contact at MERS. And with that, I'd like to hand it back to Cindy to tell us more about how our digital platforms are changing and the way we collaborate with our customers. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Here comes some updates on our efforts to enhance our digital platform of ocean transport on MERS Spot and Trail by MERS. If you are not familiar with MERSPOT is our digital booking solution. It offers a simple and efficient booking service for ocean and inland in one booking. We are continually looking to improve our popular MERSPOT service as a priority. As the industry expects space to remain tight well into 2022, we are working hard to provide you with more certainty and reliability. When it comes to securing space, we seek to improve the availability of MERS spot in 2022. Also, our rollable options is now available for all bookings made on MERS spot. Rollable allows you to optimize your transportation cost for your non-time sensitive cargoes. It also enables us to be able to load your time sensitive cargo as a priority. Earlier this year, we added the popular buy destination free time feature. You can buy additional free time at the time of booking according to your needs. Free time is one of the most requested services from our customers, and we are pleased it's now available on our spot. We also have been working on improving the platform quality of our mobile app. We plan to expand the features such as free time extension and other additional services on mobile app as well. For 2022, we have a number of upgrades and improvement plans to our digital platforms. It includes making the amendment process more transparent and easy, improving your buying journey with a focus on ease of use plus choice of add-ons. Most of our digital work is based on what you tell us you need, and so please do reach out and talk to us. We really appreciate input and feedback. This allows us to develop better digital tools and services that will make your lives easier. And now let me talk a bit about Trail by Mersk, our logistics service aimed at helping small and medium business. Trail is a truly end-to-end -end integrated logistic model. It enables you to connect your supply chain with transparency and flexibility. We offer and allocate available ocean products and landside services. We bundle them to create better solutions for you. You can experience instant quotation and proactive dedicated customer service agent. They will help you onboarding suppliers and buyers at both ends. We have customers that come online and they buy services apart from ocean freight, such as value product, customers brokerage, inland tracking. You only have one vendor to deal with rather than buying it from various suppliers. In Asia, Trail is already responsible for loading of over 3,000 FFE per week out of the region. And finally, let me update you all about MERS contract. Individual customer agreements have long dominated the ocean contract space. 
We wanted to change the conversation from the very individual Ocean Lab procurement into a more holistic partnership-based conversation. Your needs are in the center, and we can truly partner with you to solve your challenges. Having just one product was not acknowledging the differentiated customer needs. So what we have done was to understand what you were looking for and design six different contract products to better meet your needs. This is just the beginning. These products will continue to evolve, bringing more relevant propositions for business. Our ambition is to scale and optimize operations to bring this clarity beyond ocean across our integrated end-to-end -end logistic bridge. And now to close, let me pass on to Justin to provide a quick update on the hot topic, sustainability. Justin, please. Thank you, Cindy. In December 2018, MERS committed to a target of zero carbon emissions by 2050 and a 60% reduction in CO2 emissions per container transported by 2030. In our last update, we shared the exciting news that we will have our first carbon neutral liner in the water by 2023, seven years ahead of schedule. They were to return, run, run entirely on e-methanol or sustainable biomethanol from day one. Biomethanol is a fuel produced using waste materials from food and agricultural industries. Waste cooking oil, animal fats, plant residuals are all put to use in a new process. Maersk is already very involved in biomethanol fuels, where we use them to support our increasingly popular eco-delivery services. Eco-delivery is serving 25 customers worldwide, moving 38,000 40-foot containers. Demand for our eco-delivery services grew at four times in 2021 alone, with four new customers from Asia just in November. We will also introduce our groundbreaking series of eight large ocean-going container vessels that will be capable of operating carbon-neutral e-methanol by 2023 and 2024. And it's also interesting to note that for all for future new buildings owned by MERS, we'll have a dual fuel technology installed. And carbon free doesn't stop at ocean. As a global integrator of logistics, we are also continuously working to decarbonize our customers' logistics across the whole supply chain. Today, we are already working closely with customers on test cases for inland transport and air freight. For inland trucking, we're already testing biofuels in the United Arab Emirates. We're working on a fleet of electric trucks to be introduced to the U.S. market and in Sweden by early 2022. For air freight, we're in the process of forming agreements together with customers and airlines to set up a sustainable air freight product. To this end, we recently completed our first test program where a customer's cargo was shipped from Singapore to Amsterdam using aircraft running entirely on sustainable aviation fuels. With all these and many other efforts, you can see that we are working hard to offer a carbon-free supply chain to help you decarbonize your logistics, not just on ocean, but across the whole supply chain. We look forward to giving you more news on our sustainability efforts in future updates. So that ends our update today. Some quite some interesting points and exciting news for the future too. We trust you find value in these updates and we do encourage you to get in touch with questions or ideas that you need us to cover in future updates. We do appreciate your input and support. We will keep the chat box open for another 15 minutes so you can leave questions and comments there. Please also click on the survey link to give us feedback. As this is the last broadcast for 2021, may I take this opportunity to thank you for your continued support. Wish you and your families all the best for the holiday season and a very happy and healthy new year. We will be back in January. See you then. Bye. Bye-bye.